Hey everybody, welcome back to the channel. I am Britt, creator of The Style Shaker, your guide to cleaner, greener beauty, skincare, and beyond. I try all these products out for you so you know what to buy, and more importantly, what not to buy. Today I am back with a full in-depth review for the Air Perez Oat Milk Foundation. I recently included this in my epic foundation roundup. I haven't done an in-depth separate review for it. If you're in the market for a cleaner foundation, or you're thinking about buying this one, then stick around and let's get so into it. So I have this oat milk foundation in the shade Malt. It's $36.50. There are eight shades available. I originally tried this in honey, but I couldn't get a good read on it because the sample was teeny tiny. It's supposed to provide a buildable medium to full coverage, cruelty free, vegan, plastic packaging. All right, I'm gonna dive into the scorecard. Five questions, it goes through everything from ingredients to the demo, before and after, coverage, finish. If you find reviews like this helpful, don't forget to like this video, subscribe to the channel because I bring out videos, bring out, publish videos every week, so you will not miss a thing if you are subscribed. Thank you so much for that. Without further ado, let's kick it off with the first question, which is all about ingredients. On product pages, when you see a bunch of fun marketing claims that are pretty funny sometimes, not necessarily in this case, but y'all know what I mean. There are call outs for key ingredients and sometimes you look at the list of ingredients compared to the marketing jargon and they're all the way at the bottom. This is not the case. The ingredients that they spoke about, the oat milk, vitamin E, there's peach, it's all up at the front. So I actually really appreciate things like that. I noticed them and it just wanted to call it out. Overall, it looked great. It was a short list. It wasn't really hard to decipher. Everything is very personal. What works for me might not work for you. So please do check out the ingredients list and see if it works for your skin. Next up, is it inclusive? Eight shades. If they ran the full spectrum, I would say it was getting there, but it really wasn't. I found these to be more on the fair to medium side. I think they could do better overall. I gave it a three out of five on shade inclusivity. How is a coverage? Well, they said medium to full. When I first applied this, it looked really opaque and I was like, whoa, this could give some solid full coverage. It actually pressed in nicely and it didn't go super duper strong with coverage at first, but I found it very easy to build. And I think I got to a strong medium coverage here that still looked natural. Sometimes medium to full can be a little bit subjective. Like I have one vision in my mind for full, you might have another, but I do feel like you get a strong evening out. Coverage is very solid with this product. It almost reminded me of a lighter weight version of one of my previous favorites, which is the Suntech integrity impeccable skin. It does feel like a lighter weight, more approachable version of that if you're looking for something that isn't as heavy to some. Air quotes, because I don't know. I don't know. I did like applying this with my fingers as opposed to using a brush. A tiny amount goes very far. Overall for that, I gave it a four out of five on the scorecard. All right, so now it's time for finish. Side note, I should said it, should have said in the ingredients that it, they claim it won't clog pores. So check out the ingredients and see if something in there is pore clogging for you and your skin type. For finish, skin did look like skin here. It was just evened out. It looked natural. It didn't give much of a glow, which could be an advantage because you might be applying something like like, I don't know, the say sun visor underneath, which is naturally dewy. If you put this on top of that, it won't be more sheen on sheen. So that's why I like products like this. You have a little bit more control if you don't want any of that. You can do what you need to do with it. I found it to be really a straight up moisturizing foundation. Overall for finish, I gave it a four out of five. Did it stick around? How's the wear test go? It did a decent job here. It did provide coverage for the full day. The finish, however, on my skin started to look a little not so fresh. It started to look a little ready by the end of the day. I prefer to not set this because it's so nice on its own. Take that into account with the wear test. Sometimes I would say it looked ready, but if you use a setting powder, it's fine. In this case, it wasn't as as fresh with finish. The coverage, however, did stick around, so it wasn't like it just slid off my face. Overall, for staying power, it received a three out of five on the scorecard. Total score here is a 14 out of 20. I know it would have received a higher score if the shade range was there. Actually, I did very much so like this foundation. It's time for my final verdict. I kinda already gave it away. Would I buy this again? It's a TBD. But like I said, I really did like it. I'm just not sure if I'm gonna reach for it every day. That's all I have for this review. Have you tried this foundation? What do you think about it? Would you buy it again? Would you recommend it to a friend? Let me know in the comments below. And also let me know about your skin, your skin type. The context is really, really helpful to the community. Thank you so much for watching. If you found this review helpful, don't forget to like the video, subscribe to the channel. Like I said, I have new reviews coming out weekly. I am gonna go put this away. I'll talk to y'all real soon. Until then, bye.